Hey everybody, so I'm here with Mr. the one and only Mr. John Tuttle. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah boy. <laughs> and we are gonna spall a little bit of a uh, Buffalo River and he's gonna show you how he does that and we're gonna talk a little bit and we're probably gonna spall a little bit of Kia Cook too, so here we go. First off, spalling depends on the weight of the hammer you use. And you can use steel when you're working big stuff. And uh we got a bunch of real high grade buffalo up here and we pull back, I've been pulling back some of the lower stuff that I spawned, but all of my big nice stuff that's I'm gonna saw, I'm not gonna spawn, I'm not gonna waste it. But uh I hate wasting stuff, but when you I got some little pieces here and uh we're gonna see what we can do. And first off I'm gonna hit right here on this corner and see if I can run something that way and get in that spot to start on. And I'm coming here on about a about a forty five and run that off on that corner. Now what I'd like to do, I didn't bring no grinding stone out here or nothing. So I don't know how this is going to work because it's pretty sharp head, but I'm going to try to run something this way and see if I can get... What? That's a nice arrowhead plate for sure. Like that. Yeah, but I was wanting to make it bigger, but it's still good. I just, I need to really grind it hard. So I'm going to try to hit higher up and see what happens. I went around and now I got me a, a ridge to follow and try to hit higher up. See what that, happened on that ridge. That's a good one. There you go. So I developed that ridge. Now, it, it's lower here, but I'm going to come off here. It's not going to run nothing real far because it, I was hoping it'd go across, but it had that low spot in it. It got a spot right there. So that's pretty good. So now we're going to come back this way. And what I'm doing, I'm just flipping it over. And every time you hit something, sort of like sh shooting pool, you're setting up for another deal to take something off. And right now, I'd like to run one across here, but I don't have no edge. So I'm going to come down this way. And this hammer is plenty. The weight is fine on this hammer for this small piece. Now i got a ridge right here, so i got to hit here. And this is so rounded, I can't get it in there because of that ridge. So I really need a real square edge on this. So I'm going to hit down and try to move that ridge. Maybe I can get in there now. It's still hard, but we're going we're gonna to try to get right on the edge of it. And come back this way. Ah, it's still there. All right, I'm going to still try to drive a piece off here. It did not happen. You just got to make it do what you want it to. You got to keep trimming it up. Now I've got, got a nice one this way. I'll run one across there. Got me an arrowhead. I was hoping it'd go all the way across wide. And to go down this way. But the shot wave did not travel like that. Well, that piece got some beautiful pattern in it. All I'm doing right now is trying to get this bad spot out right here. I'm trying to fix it up to a good platform. There we go. Got it out. Now I'm going to come here and see if I can get a... That wasn't good for nothing. I'm just trying to get that hump out. I'm going to try to make an arrow here. Piece right here. And then I use this whole thing, it's thin enough, I heat treat it and work it down. Now when I say thin enough, don't miss, don't take that the wrong way, I guess, or the way it's worded. You can heat treat whole nodules. Uh, Eric Morris heat treats whole nodules, that's all he does. But it's very time consuming. You got to run it 200 degrees for several days, make sure you get all the moisture out, you got to bring your temperature up. I put this in and run it 200. 12 hours and then run it straight to 650 when it's thin like this because all the moisture come out of it and it's I didn't get the arrowhead piece out of it I was hoping to get because I hit it too close to the edge I was wanting to get this right here which I did but I was hoping I'd get two and because I hit too close to the edge I only got one for the arrowhead but now this is ready to put in the kill like it is that's going to be a beautiful piece so, Mr. John, so you start the you start the uh, 
start the heat treat out about 650 that's where you start at i started on 200 degrees right and i leave it at least overnight or all day i'm always in a hurry and once it's been there for like 12 hours i'll run it straight up to 600 it won't, won't step it up and leave it on there for about all day and night and then let it cool down i just cut it off i don't unplug the kill don't let it dance down and then i get it out and and i put all types in there and i got buckets and this type might be heat treated perfect this type don't have enough heat so next day i'll run it at 700. i have run so up to 800 that was grainy before it got glossy here's a beautiful piece of rock but it's fractured all the pieces got a major crack running through here but it's real slick and I love the color to it, and I don't think we're going to get much out of it, but I'm going to spoil it anyway. I see another fracture coming through there, but uh, got a big dip in there, so if I hit on that one, I don't get anything. My best move is to follow this ridge here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get me a platform. We're going to see what this piece will do. I love the color in it. This is the one that will turn red looking when you heat treat it right. And, uh, just knocking down on it. There's a crack right there. There's two different layers. I don't know if I can get past it. I'm trying to get past it. It's not breaking because it's a crack. If you hit on a rock a lot and it don't break it, it don't sound right, usually it's an internal crack in there or something. Gonna mess that up. Now I'm gonna go this way. Get a nice piece oh, off. Yeah. That's a nice one. I'm just trying to get a few pieces out of this one because of the way it's fractured and, and shaped. All these valleys in here it's just hard to find a place to knock something good and long off of. That, that come out good on the work right there. But anyway, that one came out through there. Now we got a ridge here. If I knock down this way, well guess what? I made it too steep. I didn't get my angle right on it. You can do that. So I'm going to come over here and try something else. Try one right here and see how far I can get one out of that. Ooh, That's a good, a good one there. Now I'm going to go to my little hammer and trim this one up so I put it in that hole. I'm not trying to get any more pieces out of it. I might not, some arrowhead pieces might come out, but I'm not trying to get them. I'm just trying to thin it down the best I can. And this piece is grainy. I hadn't seen much grain in that stuff I picked up, but it's only grainy right on the end there. That's why I'm having so much trouble breaking. It's extremely grainy. It's just like uh, sand, sand glued together or something. So I'm going to try to knock all that off. I'm just going to go down through trim it away. No rhyme or reason. If anything I'm doing, I'm just knocking it off. I don't want it on there. There we go. Now all this here is fine. That's nice and slick. Now we're going to go spoil some kill cut. All right, let's so go get set up over there. we got to relocate. Okay, we're over here at the kill cook pile. Getting set up here, and Mr. John's going to show us how to spoil some of this kill cook. That's some beautiful material. Okay. I've never been able to spoil on the ground. I've never tried it. This stuff's too big to put in the chair. I'm going to have to bust it up. I hate to bust it up. I, I want to saw it. We're going to do a thing on it. We'll try to knock a piece off here. We'll see what happens. I got a big hammer here. There we go. Well, there's some nice balls Just right there. Nice pieces off right there. All right, now, what I'm trying to find is, a, is something with convexity on it where I know that the flake will run uphill and there ain't a thing on this one that's got any convexity on it at all I'm telling you so probably gonna knock this corner just try to knock it off here get a few nice little plates like this come on knock it off some more just trimming away at it all right knock this one off like this now it don't have convection, but it's flat. So we'll see if I can run something 
And I got this rock propped under here, so I'll have me a, uh, I put this gonna protect me in case something comes off and hits me in my leg. And I'm gonna be able to knock some nice stuff off like that. Yeah, that was a good one right there, boy. It, it's not gonna go no further than right here, cause this caves in, but I'm still gonna knock it out. And uh, it'll help put some basically in it. And I'm gonna turn it over and look around. Here's a piece here. If I can knock this off this way, it's gonna give me a striking platform on this end here. We're gonna see what happens right here. That's a nice piece. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm really good. gun shy hitting on this stuff because I left my safety glasses in the shop. And I don't have to walk all the way back to repair that shop. If we just unloaded 2,000 pounds of stuff here in the yard. And uh, you notice I'm using a steel hammer. And uh, because it's real thick and real heavy, and I don't have copper big enough to knock it off this far like Boy, that. you are getting some nice balls off it there. It still works real good. And once again, I'm not used to working on the ground, I'm telling you. That should have went across. Had the wrong angle. That should have went all the way across. But I should I hit uh, I hit too steep and it caved in on it. The shot waves went in, dug in on it. Uh, I don't know how to hit on this one. I'm looking. I think if I come that way and then down like this, that ought to come out. I was hoping it come out all the way across there. I need something else in here. There we go. That's a good one there. Now, Mr. John, that gray key cook like that, does that turn colors when it's heat treated or? Yeah, some of, some of them kind of gets a pinkish color. Mm -hmm. And key cut, it's, there again, it's rock. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. And you know rock if you plant napper. You just don't ever know what's gonna happen with it. It's not, it's kinda of unpredictable. Some of it'll be real grainy. Some of it'll turn a yellow color. Some will have a gold-like color to it. Some will be pink. And some will just be slick gray. Now this one here, I need to be in the chair. I can pick it up and put it in my lap, and this is the way I'm used to do it. Work it off my lap like this. Well, you want to switch over to the chair, John? No, I'm going to stay here, Si. Okay. I'm going to try to run one up through here. Uh, I think it's, uh, it would be perfect to hit right here, but we got to giant gash in there, a big hen. I'm gonna try to knock that out by hitting straight down like this, this way. And I got, I got that much out. I'm gonna come back again this way. I got the rest of it out. Now I'm just grinding on that edge. I should have brought my big grinding rock down here. Woulda, coulda, and shoulda. So now I'm gonna try to drive one across here and thin this back part out. Start to thin it down so we just got one nice piece of heat treat left. I would heat treat it probably like this. Let's go ahead and try to work it down some. We got we got some ridges here we can fall on it and thin it down a little more. The thinner you got something, when you heat treat it, the less likely you are to blow that something up because the moisture gets out of it faster. There we go, I'm trying to thin this down. All right, I'm gonna try to run one right across here, and this one's going to kill. It's thin enough to put in the kill. I'm trying to get rid of this thick edge right here. I'm not trying to get no arrowhead pieces off of it. Look, I'm just trying to take some of the thickness out of it. There we go. 
That's where we put the kill. Now, that, that's too thin. I just sit there and work around that and he treat that whole piece. It ain't worth falling. I'm trying to find something. Everyone has got a, a big old crack on it. And I can't pick it up. I can, but I'm not because I've got a bad shoulder. I'm going to try to not right here. Can you pick that up on the camera? Yeah. Where this spot is here? It's a big crack running all the way up through here. I'm trying to knock this off because of that crack. That's the crack. See it separate? Yeah, look at that. There's a crack over there. That's why I was having so much trouble breaking it. Because that crack was, uh, with all the shot waves go through that. This one is probably, I would thin it down some more. We're going to go ahead and see what we do to this big piece. I'll see some more cracks. I'm going to try to hit it this way and see what happens. I'm getting these pieces on this tile and starting to stick them in my leg here. That's the shot. That's what we're looking for. Ooh, buddy, that's a good one. All right. Now, I got a natural edge right here, but it's only like, what, three inches wide? So I'm going to come off of it anyway. I'm not looking for anything long. Like I say, it's not wide, but I need to move it. So, anyway, that did pretty good. Now I'm gonna roll it around, try to come this way. I see a crack running up through here. So I'm gonna try to stand it up like this and hit down. There you go. Move it over here. Whoa. That's a good one. Yep. Now we're gonna come right here off of it. Well, Mr. John's spalling is something I think a lot of new guys struggle with, and they tend they tend to buy buy uh, stuff that's already spalled or biofaced or whatever. But I think it's good for for someone if you're if you have to get going a while to order some whole rock and and uh, learn how to spall it yourself. You learn a lot from doing that. I like spalling. And that's all I ever did for years. I got a big old crack over there. This I'm trying to knock it out right here. I'll get bright in a minute. There we go. It's running right through there. Let's see, I'm going to turn this way and see if I can get it. I like spalling. If you're making arrowheads and stuff like that, that's a nice piece off of there. But you waste a lot unless you make an arrowhead. You got a lot of stuff like this. And what the price of material is, I agree with you 100%, but as much of this stuff is costing, and I try to sell mine as cheap as I can. Because I know I want, that's what I want to get. Because I know what it is to pay a lot of money for rock and you break it trying to make something. Now, if, if you don't, y'all don't know, Mr. John uh, sells a lot of bifaces. He got some of the best material. He's been doing this a long time, and he knows exactly how to heat treat it all. And when you order material from Mr. John, you're getting you're getting top grade, really nice stuff. But if you've been around any longer than ten minutes, you probably already know who Mr. John is. So, and if you see this, I'm gonna toot my buddy's horn. He made this Dan Collins leather work, and this is like some kind of memory foam, and it's so thick. And that's what I use when I'm spalling on my leg because I don't spall a lot because I saw because I'm going to waste my material. And uh, so my leg would get all bruised up. When you spall every day, your leg gets used to it. I used to spall the vacuum like uh, eight or ten hours a day nonstop when I was pouring it years ago. And my leg was so tough that uh, it didn't matter. I'm trying to knock all this rough edge off on this one here. I'm not trying to run anything far, about as long as I'm going to get anything off of this. Just trying to thin it down. It's a big square edge. I'm getting it where it's going my kill and I ain't got to worry about blowing it up real easy.
Uh, what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to round this convexity where I can get this square edge off. Y'all notice how thick it is. And uh, I'm going to zigzag it just like it's a square edge. Just zigzag it back and forth. And zigzagging, if you hit one way like this, you turn it over and hit the other way. Hit this way, turn it over and hit the other way. Now I'm trying to knock it out I got it knocked out. I got one more thick spot right here. Got it knocked out and that's ready to go in the kill. You won't do one more of that enough, Mr. Tom? That, that's probably enough. I appreciate you showing everyone how to, how to do this, John. And, and uh, well, I'm sorry it didn't turn out no better like that. I'm used to sitting in a chair. We did one on Buffalo River and I could sit in the chair, but I can't pick them boulders up. Yeah, some of those are some of those are over 100 pounds. And the little ones here, I don't. I'm gonna save them. Well, thank you, Mr. John. And uh, y'all, we'll, we'll we'll catch you on the next one. Uh, I'm gonna be releasing some flint napping videos here pretty soon, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Keep napping. And hey, yep. still on there? Yeah, we're still on there, John. Dan's a man for the indirect percussion tool, man. I've been fooling indirect percussion. Uh, can you give me a hand, Dan? Help me yes, get sir. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Jason Newman, I spent some time with him doing indirect percussion. He was the first man to ever do it. it back in 19, early 90s, I think his name was Ted Frank, and we laughed at old Ted. But Ted had arthritis so bad, he said, look what I figured out, and it was indirect. But I've been trying to figure it out myself, and I don't have time to play with it. But Dan invented a flexible deal, and I got one of them from him, and oh my gosh, it's like daylight and dark, I'm telling y'all. It makes it fun again. I've got a tall rotator cuff. My neck's messed up, that's why I'm holding it crooked. But I can take that thing, and man, it's fun, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> So order one from him. It's worth it. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you, Mr. John. Y'all keep napping. Yeah.